some technical difficulties if you could hear me uh, please let me know we had it all scheduled all day long and then as soon as I hit go live it crashed and so I had to start it over again so I'm not exactly sure what happened but <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Not sure what happened, Silvio. <laughs> I hit to go live on the other one, and it counted me down, and then it went to a black screen and just kicked me out. So, so I had to start over again. Cool. So how's everybody doing tonight? Got anybody here from last week? Uh oh. Huh. My power amp just made a really, really bad sound, so I hope that it didn't, something hasn't gone wrong with it. All right, so how are we doing? I'd like to welcome all. I'm Darren, Uncle D, and you are here with Guitar Control and here to play some guitar and hopefully answer some questions and maybe help you out with some stuff. So if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to ask, let's try to play Stump the Dummy like we did last week. <laughs> So let's do a little roll call. Where are you guys from? Okay, so this is this is your opportunity if you have any any guitar related questions and stuff that uh, you'd like to give me a crack at answering can't guarantee I'm gonna know <clears throat> know all the answers but I'll give it a try so what's going on Oh, 
So we got anybody in here tonight from last week? Had quite a few people here last week, had a lot of good questions. Some of you guys said he was going to be back and stuff, so. So where are y'all from? I'm in Utah, and I don't know about where you are at, but it is hotter than the <clears throat> than the devil's taint. I mean, I'm sure it's hot hotter at a lot of other places, but it's this is a tough one. I ain't used to this this heat, especially this early in the summer. We were in the hundreds in last month, so it's it's been pretty crazy. So you guys don't have any questions or anything for me? No techniques maybe that you want to work with or got questions about about riffs, just just anything. Lay them on me. I can see that there's a few of you in here, so uh, lay them on me. Lay some questions on me. We got some new people coming in. Where are y'all from? Hi, Mark. Uh, Mark, uh, so you're struggling with alternate palm muting. Um, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by alternate palm muting. 
So, uh, so let me just see if I just, you know, I can take a guess here. So if you are you referring to palm muting like stuff like like rhythmically like that, you know, like in a riff or like when, you know, if you're playing like, you know, like inside of like a lick, like, uh, not sure what you, uh, what you mean. Mark, are you there? And I see you're from North Dakota. So yeah, I mean, if that if that's what you're referring to, is just like the like the riff type, you know, rhythmic palm muting, alternate picking. So you mean alternate picking and palm muting at the same time? Like, like, like that. Okay. So the, as far as the technique, when you're doing it that way, it's really not, it's really not any different than when you're, if you're playing like a, you know, you know, like a riff like that. <clears throat> so I'll just, I'll just explain it. Yeah. So like Metallica type music, that kind of stuff. Okay. So when you, uh, as far as the technique of palm muting itself, how I do it is on your, on your bridge. I don't know how familiar you are with, you know, guitar terminology, but on your bridge, you have these parts here they're called saddles and it's the it's the part where the string actually rests so on one side of it that's the string coming into the you know going across the guitar and then the other side it's going to wherever it's tied to in this case it's a string you know the strings go through the body so what i do is i actually use this part of my hand right here so if, when i'm holding the pick let me just scoot back just to the camera to focus so if I'm if I'm not palm muting, let's say I was just like, you know, playing a riff, you know. I have my hand in this spot. So uh, Oh. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, was that you that requested the warrant uh, lesson last week? I, I'm, somebody somebody mentioned that, but I don't. I intended to go through and write down people's names, and I and I forgot, and so I I don't remember if that was you. But anyway, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so if I you know I try to I'm I'm a big believer in less is more. So if you you see sometimes you know a lot of players when they're playing, and sometimes they're playing all the way back here, and then other times they're playing all the way up here. Now, sometimes that's just maybe just kind of a thing for flash. I mean, there is obviously a little bit of difference in tone if I'm playing up here versus it's a little more bright back here. So if I was playing like some, uh, like a country kind of a thing, I might pick all the way back here to kind of get that country twang. But as a general rule, I keep my hand so it's always in the same place. Oh, great. Well, awesome. I'm glad that, uh, I remember you said, you said the warrant and then, uh, I can't remember the other bands. I'll have to go back and look at the comments, but I remember they were all like more bands with that style from the, from the eighties. Uh, I can do lots of stuff with that. Um, in fact, I've got a, I did a course, um, for, uh, guitar control. That's just a 1980s guitar song collection. It just has, it has stuff like, you know, like the hair metal stuff, but it also has like new wave and, uh, uh, pop punk, you know, just different things like that in there. So uh, it's just called the 1980s Guitar Song Collection. Uh, if you're still there, Silvio, if you could put a link for that, that'd be that'd be awesome. 
Uh, so anyway, yeah, back to the Paul meeting thing. Sorry, you know, trying to talk to a bunch of people. Um, I, I keep my hand in one position is a general rule, regardless of what I'm playing. So if I'm like, you know, even if I was like, you know, if I was just doing like a strummy kind of a song, it would be in the same, the same position. So how I come to this conclusion as to where I do this is that when I hold the guitar pick, um, I, uh, I hold it with just my thumb and my first finger. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of get a little sidetracked here, so just just for a minute, just to kind of you know explain what you know method to my madness. So as you you know as you probably already know, there's like a million different sizes of guitar picks. There's ones that are you know really big, and then there's ones that are really tiny, and everything kind of in between. So the picks that I use um, are these here. They're this size. These are uh, my my custom uh, picks from uh, Sinister Guitar Picks. So these are approximately the same size as a Dunlop H3 Jazz Pick, but they are just slightly bigger. They're a little bit wider in the back and they're just a hair longer. And um, that's exactly how I wanted them because I used those H3s for a long time. But I really like these because when I hold the pick, I just set it. So this is really difficult with a webcam. I've got the back part of the pick here and it's like basically going against the inside of my knuckle. And then I'm holding it down with my thumb. So the point of the pick is coming off for my thumb, maybe this way would be better, at like a 90 degree angle. And I'm choked up really close on the, on the pick. So that way, uh, when I'm picking, my hand can be, my fingers, everything is extremely close to the strings, but not so close that I can't, uh, that I'm, you know, that I'm actually hitting it with my skin or anything like that. You just want to be really close. You kind of think about the guitar pick as like a pencil. So like, you know, if you're writing, you know, you choke up, you don't like hold the pencil like this and try to write, uh, unless you're a doctor writing prescriptions. And then obviously that's what they must be. Right. Uh, yeah. So I choke up on it like that. And then I sitting or standing, I like to, I like to put the guitar you know, I'm right-handed, so I'm playing right-handed, but I like to put the guitar on my left leg. So the guitar is over here. So that way, if I stand up, it's still kind of in the same, gosh, the camera won't stop focusing. It's so it's kind of in the same position. And then my forearm, this part of my arm right here, I rest it right here on the, the uh, this beveled part of the back bout. And if I was playing an acoustic guitar, I actually just have it so the crease of the, or the, the actual body line is just going right into the crook of my, of my elbow. Well, anyhow, I've got my arm just resting here. So everything's straight. And when I'm holding the pick, I'm just past the first string. So that way, if I was going to start strumming, I could just more wrist, less arm. You really don't want to strum like this. You know, you're not chopping the wood. You want it to be kind of more, uh, confined to your, you know, to your wrist. I mean, not that you're going to lock your elbow and not move it, but for the most part, it's like, you know, maybe an 80, 20 split, 80 to my, uh, uh, 80% to my wrist to 20% of my elbow. Uh, you have any tips for a full bend with vibrato? Yeah, Craig, I do. I will, um, give me just a minute to finish this other guy's question and, um, and I will, uh, I'll show you. So, um, yeah, so that way I'm, I'm everything is in a straight shot and it puts this part of my hand right over the top of the saddles. Okay, so for the palm muting technique, if, I, if I'm in the right spot, first of all, I, I hate that this is called palm muting. It should be called palm dampening because you're not really muting the string, you're just dampening it. So if I have my hand slid too far back, just sounds normal because I'm not even touching it. If I scoot it too far forward, it's dead. Then it really is muted, right? But if you find that kind of sweet spot when you hit the string, you should hear it and then it just slightly starts to decay off. So my what I always just like to do with my, my private students and stuff is that you find that sweet spot and then take your arm away and then bring it back and find the sweet spot and just do that 
repetitively until you can just, you know, have your arms you know, completely out, grab the guitar and drop onto the right spot. It's just about developing that muscle memory to get right there. So if I'm not palm muting, another thing too, like I said, I'm just holding the pick with my thumb and my first finger. So it leaves these other fingers free. So what I do is I actually rest them on the body of the guitar. Sometimes I'll kind of curl them up and grab the pickup ring. So if I don't want to palm mute, all I have to do is straighten those fingers out. And I don't know if you're going to be, how well you're going to be able to see this, but see how my arm just slightly lifts up. We're just talking a little bit. You don't want this gigantic, you know, you don't want your arm to be away, you know, way far away. Again, you want everything to be really close. Less is more. You know, that, that's the, that right there is, that's golden advice right there with guitar. Less is more. The less you have to do, the better. Um, so my approach is just to be the laziest guitar player I possibly can be. No, I'm just kidding. You, you want to, you know, obviously you have to try and you have to work hard and all that, you know, there's no, you know, there's no uh, gimmick or anything, but you want to find that, that spot. And then this just makes a really easy way to do that. So if I'm, you know, in fact, there's a really, really, really good riff from Metallica, um, from the song Eye of the Beholder. Um, I did a lesson on this, it's on the channel. Um, I'm sure if you just go to, the, on the Guitar Trick Control channel, if you just search Eye of the Beholder, it, you'll find it. And anyway, I don't do the whole song, I just do the intro. And that intro is one of the best exercises for working with palm muting, going with palm muting, going away from palm muting, and for rhythm. Because you know, with, with bands like Metallica, it's not always just, sometimes it's, You know, it's like got all these different variations of rhythm. So that riff is just like fantastic. You have to work with palm muting. You have to do all these different rhythms and some different dyad shapes and stuff that you may not know. So I recommend that one. Um, uh, I'll try to find a link if I can. But if not, like I said, it, I'm sure if you just search Eye of the Beholder, it will come up. Okay, so Craig, I hope that... Uh, or excuse me, uh, Mark, I hope that uh, answers your question, helps you out. Great tips. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, Craig, your question was tips for a full bend with vibrato. Okay, so just to make sure that we're on the same page, you mean like... And then wait for the camera to unfocus. Is that what you're referring to as something like that? Vibrato is is a technique that, uh, you know, you can, you can practice doing it. You can play licks that do it. There's like some certain exercises that you can work on and stuff. But from my experience, I have never really seen anybody. I've never really had a student or anything that just picked up on having good vibrato right away. Vibrato seems to be one of those things that takes, that takes mileage to get. So uh, what I always kind of compare it, to, compare it to and think about it like is, you know, you've been around a, a baby that's learning how to talk. So, uh, thanks for check out that video. Oh, you're welcome, Mark. Uh, so yeah, if you, you know, be around a baby that's learning how to talk and especially like if it's a couple's first kid, they always think it's really funny to teach the kid how to say, you know, cause everybody's first child is a genius, right? So they want to teach them how to say these big fancy words. So here we got a baby that's just learning how to try to, to, to talk and they're trying to get it to say, you know, Mississippi or supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, or they're trying to get it to say the theory of relativity, just whatever, you know, things like that. Now they can do it. They can learn how to say these words, but they still sound like a baby because they haven't practiced speaking enough to really refine their enunciation. So it's kind of the same thing with um, vibrato. So you probably already can do vibrato that's not in a bend, I'm assuming just by your question. So, you know, if you're, you know, you got the method like that, you know, the the, as Claude would say, shaking the soda can. Or you can do it like where you see like fretless instrument players, like a violinist or something, where they're rolling their finger back and forth. Okay, so when you do it inside of a bend, it's a completely different technique. 
So when you, first of all, let me ask you this question, uh, Craig, uh, can you bend a full step and hold it and have it be in pitch? Like if you, if you bend up a full, a full step, are you like, say you're, you know, you're, you're bending from a G to an A, can you, can you do that bend and it be in pitch or are you like a little flat or a little sharp? So I'm referring to is like that. So like here, if I'm if I'm gonna bend from this E to this F sharp, it's the same pitch. This guitar sounds like a lot of tune. Um, that's a good way to practice that just to get that down. So when you do the bend itself, you don't want you know if you're playing when, we're, when we learn how to play chords, we're always like yeah you know curl your fingers back so you're coming right down on the tip. So we're playing scales, doing the kind of the same thing. We're coming down, you know, on the, the tip. But if we go to do a bend and we're holding the note, if we go and we try to bend just by pushing our fingers, one, it's really, really hard. And it's, it's really hard to control to make it, you know, to, to stay in key. Uh, that's why you hear a lot of times people, you know, beginners, when they bend, they'll you know, they're, they're a little flat because they're, they haven't quite figured it out. So how I do it is if I'm going to bend is I actually, I come around, I'm still pushing with the tips of my fingers, but instead of trying to drag the string up, I kind of come around. So I'm on the, the side of the string and now I'm pushing it. So if I'm like, I'm really exaggerating this motion so you can see what I'm talking about. I mean, it's not like when I'm playing, I'm going, you know, doing that, but you want to get that like that. Once you can bend the note like that, for the vibrato, it, you don't want to try to go, you know, and do the, the vibrato that way or the soda can thing, because then you get the, you know, you sound like someone getting their neck ringed. So here's the, here's the thing you do with that. You bend, put your thumb up around, you don't have to wrap it all the way around the top, but you don't want it just, you know, you don't want the Hal, Met Leonard, Hal Leonard method, and I'm not knocking Hal Leonard, don't get me wrong. You don't want your thumb on the back of the neck like that. You want it here. So kind of what I'm doing is I'm cradling the neck between here and here. So I'm just kind of letting it, kind of letting it rest there. But at the same time, I'm, I'm squeezing just slightly so I've got a hold of it. I don't want to flop it around, but I don't want a death grip on it either because we want to have that vibrato to be smooth, right? So when I do the bend, what I'm doing actually is I'm just shaking the guitar kind of. I'm letting the weight of the guitar wiggle back and forth in my hand. Is kind of just holding the strings sort of in place and the guitar is moving around it. So like, you know, the old joke, uh, how many guitar players does it take to screw in a light bulb? One to hold the light bulb and the other four to turn them around. Uh, it's not really a guitar player joke, but I thought I would throw it in there that way. Because in actually, in a guitar player, it would be the guitar player holds the light bulb and waits for the world to revolve around him to screw the light bulb. So anyhow, I know, don't quit my day job. Uh, when uh, So when you do the bend, the vibrato, you got to, that's how I do it. So it's one of those things that look, you know, looks relatively easy. It's simple in theory, but then when you go to do it, it it's actually, you know, you're going to find that it's probably, you're going to, it's going to be harder than you think it is. But so what I suggest you do don't first of all don't try doing it you know way all the way down here because the string tension is so much higher it's going to be way more difficult and by the same token if you're all the way up here there isn't any string tension hardly so kind of a neutral area maybe start like about the 10th fret so that's like on the b string now when i go to do it like on the e string 
it feels a little different because that string's got more tension on it. So if I go down to the G string, it's got less. So you kind of have to practice it in different places. So uh, I would recommend starting at about the 10th fret on the B string and work it there. And when, when you're better, you know, when you get where you can do it there pretty good, maybe just move up to the E string and do it there. Kind of stay, you know, on those two strings. For the most part, those are the two strings you're going to be doing that on anyway. You don't really see people going, you know, and bend, you know, bending their A string up and, and doing that. Uh, so anyhow, I hope that uh, hope that answers your question, Craig. Um, it, it does it? Do have, is there anything else that uh, did I miss something or? All right, anybody else got any questions? All right, give me a good one. Let's try to stump the dummy. It's a fun game for me. And that by no means is making any input. You know, I'm not implying in any way, shape, or form that I am any sort of an, you know, know it all. Uh, I believe that uh, a question that I get asked a lot, people, you know, someone will call, they want lessons or, or they want lessons for their kid or something. And so what's the question I always get? How long does it take to learn how to play guitar? Well, that's like asking a question, how long is a piece of string? You know, it, it, they're, it's really open-ended. I'm a big believer that you you have to kind of be a, a lifelong student of the guitar. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to commit to taking weekly lessons from somebody for your entire life. That doesn't mean that at all. Um, I have not. Oh, good, Craig. I'm glad, glad to answer your question, and thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I don't take private lessons right now. Um, honestly, if I, if I could find a, a teacher and I could afford it, I would. I mean, I love to learn new stuff. I, I've been playing for, uh, coming up on 40 years. Um, and I don't know, I don't know anything. I mean, it's just, there's so much information out there. I try to learn something new every day. Um, I encourage you to do the same thing. <laughs> How long did it take you to learn? <laughs> well, I'm still learning. I'm a terrible student because I've been I've been at it for you know for uh, almost four years, and I and I still, like I said, there's just there's so much stuff out there. So you know, don't close your, your yourself off thinking that you know everything. Anytime somebody says that they know everything, or they've learned it all, or whatever, they're they're just fooling themselves because nobody knows everything. You know, some of the guitar players that are alive right now that I put up on a pedestal that I think are absolutely amazing musicians. Uh, any of them you talk to them, they're going to, they're not, they're not going to know it all. And they're not going to claim that they know it all either. When practicing scales or licks, I get some extraneous noise. I think it has to do with fret hand muting. Can you help with that? Oh, okay. Sure. Sure. So you, um, you're, so you're meaning like that, you know, you're playing a skit, you know, like you're, and you're hearing all that racket like that, how you're talking about. Um, one, if you're, if you're playing with a clean tone or if you're not plugged in, I'm sure you guys do the same thing that I do. A lot of times I just, I'll grab a guitar and start playing it. It's not even plugged in or anything. Just, you know, just noodling around. Okay, great. So you're not going to notice this. So what I'm about to say right now is probably going to be controversial. And there's lots of people out there that would. Um... Hi, Stephen. Uh, that would argue with me at this point. I've, I've heard this said 
the opposite of what I'm going to say lots and lots of times. But I hear um, players say that you shouldn't practice with distortion on um, because the distortion gain is just hiding your uh, your mistakes and stuff like that. And I and I guess it kind of depends on what you're practicing. But for this right now, we're talking about playing scales, right? Playing scales or playing legs. Even if you're working on something that you would play with a normally would play with a clean tone or maybe with a very low amount of gain, it's really good to practice it with lots of gain. The reason is, is because if I'm on a, here, let me just switch my channel, my amp channel here. Right, so here I'm on clean tone. I'm not touching the guitar. If I bump it, you can hear a little bit of noise, but it goes away really quick, right? But if I put on, I've got tons of gain on now. It's just going to make a bunch of rackets. So when you practice with, with gain, with lots of distortion, um, it's going to force you to be more... Oh, thank you, Jack. Uh, what's up, my brother? Who's your biggest friend? So Mark Anderson. I know that's a pretty common name, but are you... The Mark Anderson I know? Say something that only I would know. Um... So, yeah, so as far as the whole thing with the, with, with the technique for that. So if I'm, if I'm playing uh, like, you know, just like a major scale, you know, just like a G major scale. So one thing, when I'm playing, so here I'm starting on the low E, when I pick that string, I've actually got my finger kind of drooped down so it's touching, uh, so that way the strings can't just start vibrating on their own, right? So I'm right now I'm playing on the low E, but all the other strings are muted because I'm letting my fingers kind of droop down. I'm not pressing on the strings, I'm just kind of letting them touch. Uh, so, uh, Okay, Jack, you got, looks like you got a few questions there. Um, I will, uh, I'll get back to that. Okay, Mark, so that is you. <laughs> I wish I knew. I wish I still had that guitar, Mark, but it's, uh, it's gone a uh, long, long, long time ago. I don't even remember what, what happened to it. I think actually Matt ended up with it, but I don't remember. So anyhow, if I'm playing the lower strings, I can mute them on the, you know, as with my strings as they, you know, group across. But as I ascend the scale, now these lower strings, I can't mute them. So what do I do? The technique we were talking about with just regular palm muting earlier, I just actually take this part of my hand and as I'm ascending the scale, I'm letting it drag across the, the strings but I'm up just a little bit. I'm not in that sweet spot we talked about for the dampening. I'm actually up so it's completely muted. So that way I can... And that way, you you know, you can try to get... So you're only hearing the note that you want to hear. So what I would uh, suggest as far as the, you know, practicing that is doing, you know, just what I said. But start with it slow and just listen. If you are hearing any sound, I mean, other than like that humming there, you know, just the, the 60 cycle hum, uh, anything other than that, if it's in your technique, then just look to see what it is. It's probably, you're going to look and see, oh, well, my finger needs to roll a little bit further to mute that string, or I haven't got my hand set in the right spot. It's all very, very small, precise stuff that you kind of just you have to work with to be able to get that. So anyhow, I hope that, I hope that answers um, answers your question. Uh, what makes a virtuoso? That's probably somewhat a matter of opinion. Um, 
but for me, it's just like players who are just extremely well-rounded. I'm, you know, there's a lot of players like me, you know, I'm like somewhat of a jack of all trades. I'm not expert at nothing, but can play a bunch of different styles, but there's like some players that they just, they play and no matter what they just, they're just, they sound awesome. They're amazing. <laughs> All right, heard that. Yeah, I like that joke. Um, okay, Mark, put me on the spot. Who is who is my biggest influence and why? Uh, I probably don't have a single biggest influence. Uh, Ace Freely is what inspired me to want to play guitar in the first place. Uh, and the thing that's kind of funny is the, the thing that he played that made me want to play, I have never even attempted to try to learn how to do it. It's his solo, his like stage solo from Sh on Shock Me on Kiss Alive 2. I've never even tried to learn it. Um, I've thought about it and I, do, I just don't know why I've never gotten around to it. But yeah, like started with him. And then uh, like when I was younger, you know, high school, uh, I was into like into Jimmy Page. Um, and I still like Jimmy Page. I know, Mark, we've talked about Jimmy Page. I still like Jimmy Page, but um, I just don't put him quite up on the pedestal uh, anymore that, like a lot of people do. Um, Paul Gilbert was a huge... Paul Gilbert and Yngwie were both extremely big influences on me back in high school. Uh, but uh, players that I really like now, that I still listen to now, that still just inspire me to play, Ty Tabor from King's X, and... Uh, um, Man, I can never remember this guy's name, but it's the uh, band Polyphia. I don't know if you've heard them, instrumental band Polyphia. The, the 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 guitar player, the Asian kid, he's got like a big neck tattoo. Can't remember what his name is, but that dude is is a monster. He's he's right now he's like my favorite guy to listen to. Uh, if you were if you were playing a simple solo, maybe twenty seconds, how would you know whether you wanted to pick? down the whole time or to pick also or when to do either. Um, okay, that's actually uh, Trucker Kev the Paid Tourist. Sorry, I'm a little far away for me to read. That's, that's actually a really good question. Um, so Alternate picking, if you don't know what the technique of alternate picking is, that's just where it's just down, up, down, up. Never two downs in a row, never two ups in a row. If you are good at that technique, when you go to play something, your picking hand will just kind of do, it'll follow the past of, a path of least resistance. As a general rule, whether you pick down or up, it doesn't, it's not a huge difference in the sound, although a downstroke does have a little bit more of an umph to it. So if I was doing like a really short, you know. So here I'm like, I alternate picked that. And then I did a downstroke there because I was gonna do that bend. So practice alternate picking, you know, get good at alternate picking. And then you can, when you need to deviate from it, you won't have to think about it. Huge, huge mistake I made, uh, when I was learning how to play was um, I never thought about that. I never thought about all, you know, anything like that. So when I, when I learned three, uh, three note per string scales, I would play, I would go down, up, down, and then it started another downstroke. So it was like down, up, down, down, up, down, which is an extremely, I mean, there's a place for that, but I was really good at doing that. And then when I tried to play like fast 16th note things, I just really struggled with it. Uh, so I uh, would, uh, somebody pointed it out to me after I'd been practicing that way for a long time, somebody pointed out to me there was an alternate picking and it was incredibly hard to fix. Uh, I had to, I had to work really, really hard practice lots and lots to try to get over that bad habit. And unfortunately, I still do it. If I'm playing something new that I've never played before and I'm like so I'm sight reading, I really focused on that. My, I'll catch myself doing, you know, cross picking down, up, down, down, up, down, down like that. So yeah, uh, if you, you know, if you just work on ultra picking and get it down um, and then 
maybe certain notes in your solo. Like if you're going to hit, you know, like a big note and, and throw a bend on it, you know, that's a good, you know, good, good way to do it as a downstroke, especially if you rake into it. Uh, but other than that, it, it kind of doesn't really matter. But again, just get, get that alternate picking down. It's the best thing you can do for yourself. I think my power amp is dying. Now it's making a really weird noise. I might have to shut it off. Um, let me see here. Did I miss anybody's? Let's see, Jack. Uh, can you teach me how to learn the modes? Uh, yeah, there's. I've actually done some lessons on the channel um, for that that you can check out. Um, and then also there's a, a course that um, Guitar Control put out, um, I don't know, a while back. I can't remember while, uh, how long ago it was. But anyway, it's called um, Become an Improv Wizard. I think that's the name of it. And anyway, in that, um, there's lots of information with that. And there's also another course that Silvio, uh, Silvio Gazquez um, from Guitar Control did. Call it, it's called like the 12-week technique transformation. And it goes through all of the stuff with the modes and lots of exercises and stuff. It's, it's really good, uh, good material. Is there a finger exercise to make your finger stronger and make... Okay, yeah, as far as finger exercises, um, just playing in general is, you know, is a good exercise. Um, you've probably seen these things you can buy that you hold, and, you know, it's like resistance, like you, uh, I think they were called a, a grip master, and you held it in your hand, and then it had like little buttons you, you push your fingers with. I don't think those things really do any good. I think they probably do more harm than good. Uh, one of the big things with, with, when you're playing, the strength in your fingers is actually in this muscle here between your first and your second knuckle. Because you're not like squeezing your hand this way, you're, you're rolling it around. So one really good exercise that's pretty, um, just a second, I'm trying to reset this. Yeah, I got an issue with my power amp. One of the best things you can do to exercise for your fretting hand is a stress ball. Come on, camera. Okay. So put the stress ball in your hand. You don't want to put it in the palm of your hand because, again, you're not you're not doing this. You're not closing your hand there. What you want to do is you're, you're working on rolling it around. So if you pull it up here, put your hand around on it, and then roll into it like that. So that way you'll feel it if you're doing it right. You'll instantly feel these muscles right here in your fingers. That's a really good way to do it. Just a little bit of resistance that do not, I cannot stress this enough, do not overdo it. Um, I've seen people before do these different kind of exercises, exercises thinking that they're going to do it a whole bunch. You're going to get strong and then it's going to make everything better. And in fact, what you might do is give yourself tendonitis. Uh, so yeah, doing that with the stress, uh, stress fall is really good. And then just actually working with just, you know, the scales, the three note per string scales. That's really good exercises too. Now you're going to see a lot of stuff, you know, uh, the, like the chromatic ones where, you know, you're... And then you shift up. I'm, I'm sure that the, I'm sure that they they're they're beneficial and everything. But what I don't like about them is that it's not musical sounding at all. If you if you can practice something using a scale and actually make it sound like music, it's going to be better than just doing a random, you know, random chromatic exercises and stuff. Uh, it's going to be good for your ear. You're gonna you know you're going to be able to 
hear, you know, especially if you're playing diatonic scales, you're going to be able to hear the notes, you know, and hear the intervals and everything. As where you do those other ones, it just doesn't really sound like anything. I think it's kind of bad for your ear. And um, talk about an annoying thing to listen to for, you know, you're in your room practicing and somebody's in with an earshot. It's not going to take very long of hearing you go. And they're going to be like, what the heck? You know, it just sounds bad. It's a lot better if you, you know, if you know the three note per string patterns, you do like the uh, the modes, like the seven major modes. Um, and I have a video on the channel uh, for this too. I need to, I guess what I need to do is like make myself a list of links so, so I can post some of these in here in the future. Um, like I'll ascend Ionian. And then I'll shift up to the next position, which would be the Dorian shape and descend it. So what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm working all four of my fingers. I'm using the shapes of half, whole, 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 and whole half steps I'm referring to. Uh, and I'm playing all the notes that are in a key. So I'm training my ear to hear, you know, to be able to identify these notes and, and hear them. All right. So we are got just a little bit more time. Um, anybody else have any more uh, questions? That question that answer your question, Mark, you still there? What about arpeggios? And just so you guys know this, uh, you see this Mark Anderson in here. Uh, I've known that dude since... Uh, I don't know, since I was like 12 or 13 years old, we went to junior high and high school together and played guitar together uh, all the time back then. But now we live, you know, a bunch of pretty far away. Might as well be the moon because I can't drive anywhere right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Mark, what do you uh, also arpeggios? What about arpeggios? What is an arpeggio? Good to see if arpeggios are super important for understanding improvisation. Yeah, arpeggios are are really awesome for improvisation because it's an instant, it's instant melody. You know, anytime you're just going to take the notes, the notes that are outlining the chord you're playing over, you can't, you can't go wrong. Uh, there's, you know, there's a ton of different ways that you can do, you can do arpeggios. You can just do the whole, you know, play the every other note thing in a scale. So like if I take the major scale and I play the first third, so I skip over the second note, go to the third, skip over the fourth, go to the fifth. Now I've, I've just outlined like a G major chord. And then, then there's the seven. So now that would be like a, um, and then back to eight, back to the one. So there's that way. And then you, you can arrange them lots of, you know, different ways you could, you know. I have done a ton of, of lessons on on this YouTube channel on arpeggios, uh, string skipping arpeggios, sweeping arpeggios, three string, four string, five string, and six string arpeggios, uh, arpeggios with tapping, like all different kinds of stuff. So if you're like into arpeggios and stuff, that's a good thing to check out. Um, and then also Silvio also did another um, a little mini course called. Uh, called Arpeggio Cookbook, and it just has like a ton of different shapes. It's a really great, great resource. Um, 
again, I should have these links and stuff, but I don't. But if you just head over to guitarcontrol.com uh, and click on, it says shop or courses or something, you, it's easy to navigate. You can find all that stuff. Oh, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Uh, Jack, what do you think about Asian guitar player like Polyphia? That's the guy I was talking about earlier. I cannot remember. I cannot remember what his name is. It's like right on the tip of my tongue. If somebody wants to Google that and put it in there, that'd be awesome. But it's the guitar player for, for Polyphia. Um, if you have not checked out Polyphia, you owe it to yourself to check them out. Um, it's just, it's instrumental music, but it is it's just sec. It's just next level. All the all the musicians in the band are like really good, and they're all like really young. The guitar player looks like he's, you know, like maybe in his mid twenties or something. I don't know, but he's he's absolutely amazing. Just a a killer player. It just does stuff that I would just never never think of. Uh, I had a student that turned me on to him, and they're they're really awesome. I wrote this thing. It was kind of, it, this is like, nope, that's not his name. That, I think that's the other guitar player's name. Tim, um, Tim Henson. That's his name, Tim Henson. I just, just thought of it. He's, he's incredible. He's an incredible player. I, uh, I wrote this thing kind of, it was kind of inspired by his playing, but it's, uh, it would be like me going and say that was inspired by Stevie Ray Vaughan. It's not, it's not real great, but uh, for me, you know, it would, oh, I can't remember how to play it. There's something like that. All right, we are just about out of time. So, um, anybody else got any questions or anything before we go? What is about? I don't know. I don't know, Jack. There's uh, another guy. I'm really, I'm absolute terrible at remembering names. Um, there's this other guy. I'm sure you've seen him on YouTube. Uh, Korean kid. He plays acoustic guitar and he does like finger style renditions of other songs and like we'll play like all of the instrumentation at the same time like he did uh um he did that Celine Dion my heart will go on and he just just does like the rhythm and then the melody with his fingers it's just it, it's just amazing uh lots and lots of really killer players like that that just goes right over my head. I haven't got any idea. Rocksmith. Um, the very, very first, when that very first came out several years ago, I had a student bring it over and show it to me. And um, it worked way better than I thought it would, especially considering you can use your own guitar. I was like going, how, how is that even going to work? And it, it worked pretty good. I would really like to check out the newest version of it because I'm sure that I mean, that's probably been 10 years. So I'm sure that the technology has come a long, a long way. Uh, I would love to see the day come where I can buy a cord, I plug it in my guitar, I plug it in the computer, and everything I play is notated out for me. That would just be the greatest thing ever. Because that's, you know, with uh, teaching lessons, you know, my private lessons and doing the guitar control YouTube lessons, a big chunk of that time is spent creating transcriptions. It's time consuming. Um, I've done more than I could possibly count, and I, I, I'm not really a big fan of it. I'm kind of burnt on it. So some kind of an automatic, automated thing like that, and I think that that technology from Rocksmith is probably what would, would bring that in. Whew. All right, I got time for one more question, and then I'm going to get out of this studio because this is like the hottest room in the house. When I moved into this house, I chose this room for my studio and boy, did I make a mistake. Uh, there's other rooms that are cooler, but it's super hot here right now. 
I bet it's hot up there where you are, Mark. I talked to somebody the other day that was in Spokane, and they said that it was like it got up to like 108 degrees or something. I just got crazy. All right. So nobody got any more questions or anything? All right. Well, I think then I'm going to call it a night. But I appreciate everybody that, came, that, that showed up. Uh, I had a lot of fun. You're here to the only good old fashioned. Uh, nope. I have no idea. <laughs> what, what, what? No, I have not. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, thanks for, thanks for tuning in and, uh, interacting with me and stuff. It's a lot of fun. I will be here again, uh, next Wednesday. Uh, you know, I kind of plan on just this be kind of a weekly thing as a general rule. I mean, you know, so I'm sure there'll be times things come up and can't uh, can't do it. I was almost afraid it wasn't going to work because my in I lost internet for uh, yesterday, but uh, got it fixed this morning, so back on and ready to go. All right, well, everybody, have a great night. Thanks for uh, um, for joining me here and listening to me ramble on, and hopefully, I was able to answer some questions and maybe give you a little bit of help. All right. Thanks. I will. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching.